Hi everyone, good morning. I am getting ready for work today and this is my beautiful hair. This is what it looks like um, after, you know, it's been slept on and I've just taken a shower and I, I do leave my hair up for the shower. But you guys always ask me how I do my slick buns and it is literally the easiest thing ever. I do have very easy to work with hair though. It pretty much will do like whatever I want it to do. It's very easy to curl, it's very easy to straighten, it's very easy to style, it's very easy to put up. But I do have several techniques to get it very slick and shiny. Um, the first thing that I do is I do brush my hair. I am like trying to do the curly girl hair method and I know brushing your hair is like very frowned upon but I just can't not brush my hair. I have to um, but what I do to prevent like as much damage as possible is I do brush the ends first instead of brushing from like the top down and that sort of just prevents you know more breakage if you have like a lot of knots at the bottom of your hair and you try and like brush it up from the top it'll just be bad and very messy but yeah I just brush my hair through make sure I don't have any knots in my hair and then I'll brush my hair back I usually do this in the bathroom with a sink nearby um, so I have lots of water to work with because the big key to getting your hair really nice and slick back and shiny is really water. I have however improvised, I just emptied out this like little travel size bottle of setting spray and I put water in it so I am going to like drench the top of my hair with lots of water like lots of water the cool thing about this hairstyle too is I a lot of the times when I like know I'm going to be doing my hair like this in the shower I just go ahead and get the top part of my head very wet and then go with that. I'm going to be self-conscious of my brows if I don't brush them out right this second. <laughs> and then I'll just brush my hair through. And if you guys know me, I do wear my hair parted in the middle. You can definitely part your hair however you want to part your hair. But whenever I do this hairstyle, I do like to part my hair to the side because it does, you know, it is like pulling your hair and I don't want to thin out my middle part. I want to leave my middle part as full as possible. So I do part my hair on the side. I basically part my hair exactly where my eyebrow starts. Luckily I have nails and I can just kind of find the part. That looks pretty good. And then I'll brush my hair like that. So that's what it's looking like so far. I always make sure to brush the bottom part too, just to make sure I don't have any knots or anything going on there. Going to spritz even more water all around. And I don't usually use hairspray. Sometimes I even use like a leave-in conditioner for this step, but I have been lately using some gel, um, mainly because I would like to eventually use this gel up or something. It's just a huge thing of gel, but this is the Aussie Instant Freeze Gel, and I just got like a little bit in my hand, and I'm going to spray Am I already out of water? This thing was so small. I'm going to spray like a ton of water in my hand to dilute it. And I am going to take it through my hands and a lot of it underneath as well to make sure that none of my little baby hairs underneath make a guest appearance. Um, 
And then I just keep brushing, just keep brushing, make sure everything is really flat. I also never do this hairstyle on like first or second day hair. This is definitely a third or fourth day hair for me. Um, what I'm doing now is I am taking, I believe this is an Olivia Garden uh, little brush thing. I will leave it linked down below. I'm not exactly sure what it's called and there's nothing written on this brush. But this brush is definitely key to making sure every single baby hair is in place and down and flat and combed through. And for like this part, my little crown part, um, it, this is like probably the most challenging part is getting this part to look flat and neat and tidy, um, especially because the back of my head is like very flat. So yeah, this kind of is going to be like about the best I'm going to get for my like crown area. I don't really know if that's the correct term for right here um, but that yeah that's just the best I'm going to get. Also you can put like if you have like a lot of like scalp showing kind of like I do my hair is pretty thin you can use like a colored dry shampoo and that will help quite a bit but I don't bother with that I just I don't know extra step more product in my hair that I don't need but yeah just brushing everything out especially the underneath too don't ever forget the underneath you want everything to be really nice and tidy and I just keep gathering up all my hair and then I go through with this comb brush kind of thing I make sure every single piece of hair is laying super nice and flat. This thing, this brush, is like a must-have if you want nice, slick hair. And then I go through and do the other side. So the front is looking really good. We just really need to focus on that. Also, since I have very, very dark hair, this is definitely like the time where you notice like all of your dandruff or like dead skin. There's nothing to do about it. It just is what it is, especially if you have very dark hair or I don't know, maybe I just have a dry scalp, not really sure. Whatever it is though, I don't mind. As long as my hair is looking neat and out of my face and I don't have to fuss with it throughout the day, then it's all good with me. Okay, so I think that is going to be the best I'm going to do. The type of hair tie that you use is very important. I like these little plastic spirally hair ties. I think that they have the best hold. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna spin me around so you can see a little bit better. I'm just spinning, twisting my hair. Sorry, this is like really hard to try and do on camera. And then I just do a bun, like what you're seeing here. Not anything you haven't seen before. I don't worry about any little pieces sticking out. Um, and then I wrap my hair tie around my hair and I really try and get it very flat to my head, just like that. Okay, because I don't want the hair tie to be like pushing the bun out anymore to make it like 
kind of like come out like that like I don't want any of that so that's what my bun is looking like so far feels like a little bit loose over here which is kind of annoying but is what it is and then I take a scrunchie I always take a scrunchie and I finish off my bun with a scrunchie to make sure all those little bits that might have been coming out of the sides are all tucked in and then I can go in with like a little bit more gel and I'm going to spritz another set of water down there and take my fingers and just smooth everything down. Now, sometimes I get to this very end, I get to the very end of me doing my hair like this and I decide I want to redo it. Just redo it. If it makes you happy, you know, if it's, if it's going to make you feel better, you can just go ahead and redo it. Um, but this looks pretty good to me, um, and this is how I do my slick bun, and I really like how it looks from the side as well. Um, sometimes, like, if I've done a bad job, the bun will be coming out quite a bit, but it's not. It looks, it looks really good from the back. I am also a big fan, as you guys may know, of brow gel, and you can always comb through some of those baby hairs with a little bit of brow gel and you can just have this handy. I'm now going to just go ahead and do my makeup. I am going to first go in with the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Foundation. I've been super into not wearing um, concealer which is pretty new and different for me but I kind of wanted like a more full coverage face today and I wanted to try out the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. It's like my favorite foundation. And I wanted to see how it looked without concealer. I'm sure it's going to look good because I've been really enjoying skipping concealer lately. And my sponge was just taking so long. Just applying a little bit underneath my eyes to act as my concealer. I've also been decluttering lately. I recently went through all of my cheek products and I went through all of my lip products and I wanted to get more use out of a couple of things that I saw in my collection, kind of like rediscovered. One of those things is my Ara Perez Rice Powder Blush and Bronzer in the shade Roma. This is such a gorgeous bronzer shade on me. It looks so like natural and very pretty. So yeah, when I saw it, I kind of like rediscovered it and I really wanted to get some more use out of it. So I'm just going straight in with my light layer powder brush from Real Techniques and I'm kind of just using that all over my skin. I did not set my skin yet. Um, it's kind of like the everyday question of like, am I going to set my skin or not? So I'm going to clean up underneath there. Now a blush that I really want to get more use out of is my MAC Mineralized Blush in the shade Lovejoy. How stunning is that blush? But I've only used it a handful of times, but I wanted to use it. Another Real Techniques brush. This is their blush brush, and I'm just applying it sort of all over. This is a product I would love to use up one day. This is my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. I would love to finish it one day. Um, but I'm going to apply a little bit. Yes, oh my god, that's so gorgeous. I usually don't wear this much makeup to my job. Like I have, I wouldn't say usually, but like I just haven't in a long time. I just pulled the Milk Makeup uh, Kush Brow Gel and I wanted to see if there was like actually any product left. Seems 
Like there's like a little bit. But I'll probably end up tossing this pretty soon. Maybe I'll get like a couple more uses out of it and then throw it away. I think it's I think it's time. And I also would not be repurchasing this product if you were curious. Um, it's definitely one of those brow gels that gets better with time, but I don't have that time. I kind of just want my brow gel to be good as soon as I open it. Just drinking my green tea. I always have green tea in the morning, um, either plain or add a little bit of honey, but green tea is my go-to. I'm going to do my eyeshadow. I pulled out my Wander Beauty Wondrous Off Duty Eyeshadow Palette and it looks like this. I feel this is something that I totally could see myself using like every day, but I just don't usually ever reach for it. It's also like stored a little bit further away and if it's not like in my immediate area, I'll like forget about it. I'm going in with the shade Shoreline and I am just applying that to my crease really just does like a transition-y shade and this palette is mainly shimmers but I kind of I don't know they kind of seem all like one and done kind of eyeshadows which I think would make sense for the Wander Beauty brand I'm going to go in with the shade unplugged am I that looks very cool toned uh, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. I'm going to go in with Unplugged, and I'm going to apply that all over my eyelid. Oh no, that's, that is so pretty. That is so pretty. Exactly what I wanted. I love a soft shimmer. It just makes sense, you know? I'm going to go in with a little bit of Desert Island and I'm actually taking that like on a little blending brush and I'm going to focus it on the outer corner and just kind of like bring it into the crease just a little bit. It is a shimmery shade but like I said I just feel like these shadows are like one and done kind of shadows so you can kind of put them like wherever you want. All right. I am done working on the eyes, um, aside from mascara. I really, really want to use up my Tarte Man Eater mascara. I just added some like contact solution to it, which is a little trick if you didn't know. If you have mascara that is drying out, add some contact solution or some eye drops to it, and it will kind of like rejuvenate. The reason why I found out this trick is because in middle school I realized that like whenever I was putting contact solution like this is like extreme but like whenever I was putting contact solution like this giant bottle of like Costco contact solution in my eyes for like eye drops um, I noticed it would like make my mascara run a little bit and also, I read on the bottle that it mimics tears, and I was like, oh, okay, well, like, tears make mascara run, and then I was thinking, oh my gosh, I bet I could put this in my mascara, and it would become, like, runny again, and it totally works, but this is, like, a very well-known trick, um, so yeah, I didn't, like, invent it, but I did, like, discover it myself. Going to go through with my lash separator. This is from Ulta. For my setting spray, I'm just going in with some Urban Decay All Nighter, but I'm using this uh, like honey scented one when they release their honey eyeshadow palette and like that whole little collection. Or maybe that was from the holidays. Yeah, they released their honey collection last holiday season and they came out with all these little gift sets and I got the setting spray on one of them. Mm, I love the skin. I have been really liking not using concealer lately. I feel it... I don't know, I 
feel like it looks way more natural. When I was decluttering my lip products, I rediscovered the Clinique lipstick in the shade Delicate. And I really need to use this gorgeous shade more often. Oh my god. I'm gonna pair it with like a dark lip liner. Max Spice. The answer is always Max Spice. And that is my hair and makeup for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I don't usually include my hair, but I do get loads of questions whenever I wear this hairstyle of you guys being curious to see how I achieve my slick bun. But yeah, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, definitely go ahead and do so. And hopefully I see you next time.